Route 25. What will an emergency situation sound like? Increased levels of professionals, amateur radio operators, and civilians communicating with each other. An incident will create an exponential amount of radio traffic depending upon the severity of the situation, whether it be terrorism, civil unrest, natural disasters, temporary lapse of law and order, shit hit the fan without rule of law you name it it will be reflected through the radio communications on multiple frequencies and bands you as a volunteer ham first responder concerned citizen or one that wants to survive and protect your family must have situational awareness by gathering intel through various methods and also providing intel through communications this subject is very dear to me because it provides my bread and water, security and entertainment as a hobby. Not to mention, I'm a first class geek. That being said, what will be the one piece of equipment that will serve as a lightweight, portable, adaptable piece of comm gear for hams, civilians, preppers or survivors? In my experience, that gear that served me well is the uh, Yesu VX7R handheld transceiver. This compact rugged radio is feature rich and packed full with operational op options. Too many to mention in this review. I've seen this radio used by many first responders, communications consultants, and professionals in the field. I would ask them, hey, is that a modified VX7R? And I will get a wink with a will not confirm nor deny your question. So anybody in the know out there in communications know that this little radio here it is more than meets the eye. You can see how small it is. Lightweight. You could put it in almost any pocket, uh, your vest or uh, load bearing gear in your pack. Uh, this radio is built rugged. It's got a magnesium alloy, alloy case with rubberized corners. It's supposed to be, supposedly it's capable of being fully submerged in three feet of water for 30 minutes. Rain will not be an issue, I guess, out there in the field, and I could attest to that. This has been with me out in the rain, hiking around. Uh, it's a wideband receiver that could function as a scanner, receiving from 500 kHz way down there in the AM dial, uh, shortwave and whatnot, to 999 MHz. Uh, except that the cell phone frequencies are blocked, so that's uh, required by U.S. law. They don't want you snooping on cell phone conversations, even though most of them are already digitized and uh, this is not capable of capable of doing that uh, even though it may pick up really cheap Walmart uh, cordless phone uh, sets especially the older ones uh, it's got a dual simultaneous simultaneous receivers you can scan or monitor two bands at the same time so if you look closely at the display there let me see without look closely there's two frequencies that's being scanned actually one's not being scanned the other one's being monitored so if I put one on the scan mode there it is it's scanning the top main band is scanning and that bottom frequency is the 151.46 is uh, just stationary there and it's listening to that so it's two receivers doing separate functions at the same time so that's pretty powerful you can have one the main band the one that's scanning on top to be transmitting to your uh, whatever party that you're talking to and you can have the lower band uh, the lower frequency there uh, just monitor or that could be placed on the scan mode as well uh, you could program up to 450 mem memory channels that is user user selected and or and you can organize them into nine different groups uh, has 10 weather channels already programmed 89 popular shortwave broadcast stations channels and 280 VHF maritime channels that's the uh, marine band so it, even with the 450 frequencies that you could put in there or memory locations it has a lot more of the frequencies already built into it there they're the most common used frequencies out there uh, it has a spectrum analyzer built into it that spectrum analyzer 
allows you to uh, have a visual representation of frequencies that are around it in your area. Uh, how can I explain this? My biggest complaint about the VXR, VX7R is that it's really complicated to set up at first. Once it's set up, it, it's relatively easy. But uh, this is the manual for the uh, radio. And as you can see, it is just full of information here on just programming it and, and using it to, to its full potential. And uh, even though I'm in communications and I program radios all the time here and there, I still have to break out the manual to set up my little radio there to add another frequency, especially if it's a repeater pair. And uh, it gets really tedious, you forget because you don't use it all the time as far as programming it once you set it up. But if you're in a pinch and you have to add on a, an extra frequency on there, uh, I have this in my truck or in my little pack if I'm out so I could do it on the fly. So, uh, But there is another method that you could do, you could use to program this radio here uh, by the use of a laptop or computer. And uh, I'll leave the link in the bottom there to this one website of a free program called the VX7 Commander. And what it is, it's a uh, amateur radio guy out there uh, designed this program so you could program this radio by the use of his software. On eBay, you can find the uh, serial data cable, programming cable, that will work with this particular radio. Uh, this up here is the uh, microphone jack, a speaker microphone jack for other uh, accessories. And the programming cable is just a uh, audio plug right here. And you just screw that right in there stick this to the other end of your computer and you could program this radio via the computer it's way easier if anything that that is 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 a must I say with this particular radio uh, the guy he it's completely free but he has a link on his uh, uh, PayPal link on his website that uh, asking for donations uh, I'm telling you do this guy a favor and kick in you know whatever you could could donate because it's well worth it. Uh, he could have been making a hot low, a hell of a lot more money uh, by selling it, but he provides it free to the public. Anyway, that's one way to program this, and also this modification that I've been talking about. That software is able to do that via firmware uh, modification of this radio. Uh, normally, to expand the transmit capabilities of this radio past the amateur bands let's say into Mars CAP or uh, which stands for military auxiliary radio service which is uh, the military backup uh, radio system that civilians uh, help them out with I guess back in the day is still active now in the Civil Air Patrol those are expanded frequencies that this is capable of transmitting on but you would have to modify it by going into the back here and behind this uh, this uh, label here or this little panel uh, there's a set of jumpers really small jumpers and you have to sh short out a, a few of them to to get that capability uh, not only that that this could be per, uh, modified to do Mars cap it has an extra step called free band and that free band I forgot what the uh, frequencies are I'll include that in the next video when I actually do the, the uh, software version of this. Uh, you could expand the uh, transmit capabilities of frequencies past amateur, past Mars cap. Something like uh, from 30 megahertz all the way up to 599 megahertz. And uh, now that, that kind of sounds, doesn't sound right, but it's, 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 it's that close. But anyway, 